In order to talk about the unit circle in this unit, we have to remember our trig functions. So you use these back in geometry. I think you used all six, but if not, you definitely use the top three. Okay, so we, as we talk about trig functions, we're talking about sine, cosine, and tangent, and also secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Now, I don't know if secant, cosecant, and cotangent are familiar to you. I guess that might be new, okay? I don't remember if those come up in geometry at all, but sine, cosine, tangent. Do those sound familiar at all? Yeah. Okay, and we're talking about how they relate to this triangle. So right here, this is the angle of reference, okay? That is our theta. Do you guys remember anything? Sokotoa? Sokotoa? What's that mean to you? Other than just some funky thing to say. Okay. So, okay, it tells you what to use. So the so. This part represents your sign. Do you remember what that stands for? Opposite and hypotenuse. So what this says is that when you do the sine of an angle, it is the ratio of the side opposite the angle over the hypotenuse. Okay, so that, that came back to you. It sounded a little familiar, maybe? I don't know. No? Okay. Well, it's not bad, I promise. Now, let's pause and look at this triangle. If here's my angle, okay, where's opposite? Opposite is the side that is not touching that angle. So when you talk about the opposite side, it is the side that is opposite the angle and does not touch it. So it's not either of these two sides, it's the side opposite. Hypotenuse? The longest side. It's also the one across from your right angle or the one that is not a leg. Okay, hypotenuse. So if we're doing the sine of an angle, then it is the ratio of the side opposite to that angle over the hypotenuse. If we had numbers, we'd just plug them in, which we'll do down on examples one and two. Do we remember what this third side is called? Adjacent. Adjacent. Which if you look up at Sokotoa, the side we're missing starts with an A, right? Okay, so the side that is adjacent to your angle is the side that is a leg, but it actually touches the angle. Does that sound, does that make sense? I shouldn't say sound familiar, because whether it does or not, it just has to make sense, okay? So here's my angle. Hypotenuse is the hypotenuse, what you've been learning for years. Opposite and adjacent are my two legs that meet at the right angle. Opposite is across from the angle in question. Adjacent touches the angle in question. Okay, so the sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. What about cosine? So, ka, what is that? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so that would be the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Tangent. So, ka, toa. So, toa is opposite over adjacent. Okay. So, memorize them know them. Sokotoa is your go-to of a way to memorize them. That's just all it is. Okay, a memorization technique. Now, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. 
are our reciprocals. Okay? So if you know sine, cosine, and tangent, you know these other three because they are the reciprocals. Now, the obvious pair that goes together, tangent and cotangent, are reciprocals. So if tangent is opposite over adjacent, what does that mean about cotangent? It is adjacent over opposite. So it's just taking your ratio or your fraction you already have and flipping it upside down. Okay. <clears throat> Secant goes with cosine. It goes with the opposite of what you think. Okay? So secant and cosine. I just remember I mix up my beginning letters. Because cosine goes with secant, so C goes with S. And what's that going to mean here in a moment? Sine will go with cosecant, so S goes with C. Okay? Again, you come up with your memory, but it's kind of the opposite of what you would expect, right? So cosine goes with secant. So if secant is a reciprocal of cosine, secant is... Hypotenuse over... Adjacent. <clears throat> and process of elimination. That means cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite. Okay. You need to know it. That's all it comes down to. Okay? Now, you ready to use it? Because this is all you're using in homework. Okay? This is what you're using in homework. So, as you start to look at example one, it asks us to use the following triangle to determine the six trigonometric functions of the angle theta. Now, good news, bad news. Your homework is 2 through 18 evens. That's the good news. Bad news? Every homework problem has five or six answers. But it's one triangle. You get the triangle set up. It's easy to get your six answers. Okay? So, use the following triangle to determine the six. So, when we're talking about determining the six, that means I'm going to be looking for sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta to get started. And then I will be looking for cosecant of theta, secant of theta, and cotangent of theta. Um, your abbreviations are pretty obvious there other than cosecant is CSC. That's your three-letter abbreviation there. Okay, so what do we know about sine? Opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, note where is theta? Theta will have to be told where it's at, and theta is right there. What's opposite? Are you guys with her? Okay, opposite is the 2. Over, what are we supposed to be doing? Hypotenuse. What's the hypotenuse? H. H? Okay, what if I say I want a number? X is still not a number. Uh, 5. Oh, is that the A squared? 6. So let's talk a little bit of Pythagorean theorem. How do we find the missing side? Pythagorean theorem, because Pythagorean theorem applies to a right triangle, yes? Is this a right triangle? Yes, we're only talking about right triangles. These six trig functions only apply to right triangles. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's 
leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So 2 squared plus 3 squared equals, I have C squared. You want to say H squared, go for it. Um, so the hypotenuse is going to be square root of 13 if you do your math correctly. And I'm going to leave it as square root of 13. So that is this diagonal side here. It is square root of 13, and it is your hypotenuse. So what is the sine of theta? Two over the square root of 13. Good news, you don't have to rationalize. Okay. At least I don't think they rationalized. I don't have my notes rationalized, so that's all we're going to worry about is I did not rationalize in my notes. I don't remember if they rationalized in homework. They did not. Okay. So that's one of six answers. Cosine. What are we supposed to be doing for cosine? Uh, opposite, or adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. We haven't labeled it. What's the adjacent side? That is the three, isn't it? Okay, it's the leg that touches the ankle. So adjacent over hypotenuse is going to be three over square root of 13. Tangent of theta. Two over three, opposite over adjacent. See, once you get set up, you know, one problem is easy. So is each problem gonna have or five, which we'll go with the next example. Okay. Okay. Now, I set these up in this specific order because I did. I can. CSC is cosecant of theta. What do we know about cosecant? Okay. Cosecant is reciprocal of sine. I'll tell you. I don't. For cosecant, I do not usually think. Oh, it's going to be hypotenuse over opposite. I usually think, oh, it's going to be the reciprocal of sine. So that's why I have cosecant up here. The reciprocal of sine is square root of 13 over 2. What about secant? Uh, square root of 13 over 3. Okay, square root of 13 over 3 because it is the reciprocal of cosine. And what about cotangent? Cotangent of theta is 3 over 2 because it is the reciprocal of tangent. There are six answers. So as I said, each problem will have something like that where it's five or six answers. Questions on that one? Okay. Example two. Assuming that theta is an acute angle in a right triangle. Find the remaining trigonometric functions when given that cosine of theta is 5 sevenths. What are they giving you here? Uh, I mean, obviously cosine, but... Here, adjacent and hypotenuse. Ah, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the way they have this problem set up is they're saying that my adjacent and my hypotenuse or five and seven respectively. Now, I'm gonna draw a triangle. All you need, oops, is it's a right triangle, and they said that theta is an acute angle in the right triangle. Does it matter which angle you make theta? It does not. Adjacent is 5, so the way I have that tri this triangle set up, 5 is going to be on the bottom side. 7 is the hypotenuse. What else do I need to know? Opposite. Yeah, we're going to need to know that opposite, aren't we? Okay, opposite is opposite the angle, doesn't touch it. 
How do I find my opposite? Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 5 goes into my equation for A or B, whichever one makes you happy. So A squared plus 5 squared equals 7 squared. with me if I say a squared is 24? Yeah. And that means a is the square root of 24. Or, what's another way to express the square root of 24? Not a decimal, though. 2 square root of 6. Because 24 is 4 times 6. 4 is a perfect square. The square root of 4 becomes 2 outside. Yes? Okay, so when you talk about A, you can say square root of 24, or you can say 2 square root of 6. The homework will have radicals simplified. It won't be rationalizing, but it does have radicals simplified, if I recall. Yes. Okay, now, I said earlier that you'd be giving 5 or 6 answers. Here's an example where you only have to give 5 answers, because it says find the remaining. That means I'm finding the... Remaining five, yes? Now, when I set this up, I'm pretty much going to set up my answers. And if you're trying to say, okay, how do I make this easy to grade? I pretty much set up my answers like this every time. Now, in this case, I'm going to set up sine of theta. I'll basically leave cosine theta blank because I already know it. Or you can put it in, tangent of theta. And then over here, the reciprocal of sine is... Cosecant. The reciprocal of cosine, I didn't write cosine, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, and the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. Fill them in. What is sine of theta? Okay, opposite over hypotenuse, so 2 square root of 6 over 7. Well, if sine is 2 square root of 6 over 7, what's cosecant? Seven over two square root of six, because cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. What's secant? Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine was five sevenths, so this is seven fifths. Do I care if you put cosine here? I don't care if you put cosine here. You're not going to see it on the answer key, but I don't care if you put it there. Okay, tangent. What's tangent of theta? Two square root of six over five. Opposite over adjacent. So what's cotangent? 5 over 2 square root of 6. Adjacent over opposite. Okay. So when they ask you for the remaining trig functions after providing one, they're wanting 5. Okay. So thus, do you see now how I said every homework problem has 5 or 6 answers? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pythagorean theorem, simplifying radicals. It's a lot of review, basically. Basically. Okay. Questions? So. Okay. Well, we can start homework check then. <laughs>